finally reviewed the greatest cinematic trilogy of all time. Rugrats Go Wild. This such an amazing film. This film features Bruce Willis when he stopped giving a crap about his career and started appearing in garbage and not giving a crap. Because Bruce Willis did that. And this film uh, has the Rugrats characters meet the Thornberry um, family. And this heart-filled family adventure. Um, it's, it's the third out of the Rugrats trilogy of films. It exists. It happened. And it sucked. <laughs> Where to begin with this one? Uh, watch my other reviews for the Rugrats movies. Watch any other movie besides this. Watch anything else besides this movie because this movie is really bad. And I'm going to explain why it's so freaking terrible. I mean, this movie is just... It's not quite as bad as I'm making it out to be, but it's really not good. It's, it's got tons of issues. First off, why the wild thornberries? Why? Like, why did this need to be a crossover movie? Like, you know, a Nicktoons movie is different. Because that's just cool. Just seeing all your different characters show up. But this would be like if Space Jam... Was not a crossover with Michael Jordan? It was a crossover with like Hey Arnold or something, or Batman the animated series, like something weird. Okay, it's it's like I there's no reason for these characters to meet. No one was asking for this. No one wanted this to happen, and it did not work. Some of the characters actually work well and play off each other well, like the oldest daughter. Um, not Elijah, what's her name? Debbie uh, and Angelica. That was a smart dynamic, and I thought that actually worked. Uh, but, like, the re like the parents are not even in the majority of the film. It's weird that Tommy all of a sudden, like, looks up to Nigel Thornberry. It's, that's just, like, a weird thing. Let me close this door here. That's just a freaking weird thing. It, like, it's just random all of a sudden now. I guess it makes sense with the opening of the first Rugrats movie, but I just... I don't know. It, it still felt like it came out of nowhere. Um, and like, Spike going on this family vacation and he's talking. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just talk about the plot of this movie because this movie has one of those. It's not good, but it has one of those. Uh, the Pickle family gets stranded on an island. And, you know, all the Rugrats family and crew, they all get stuck on this island where the Thornberries and they all meet and you watch Donnie take Chucky's clothes and him, uh, do that. And the rest of the family try to figure out a way to get off the island and the babies wander off and, and find Nigel Thornberry, I guess. And then the other, the other, and then Elijah talks to the dog voiced by Bruce Willis. It's Spike, right? Yeah, Spike. I mean, his voice. By Bruce Willis doing a really, really bad job at voicing this character. Like, his... The, his just deliberately is like... He clearly did not give a crap. Like, he's just... He's just doing it for the money. But, you know... He's here. I don't know. That was a weird thing about the early 2000s. Like, yeah, we still see that today. Where, like, movies have... All these people and celebrities in there. And they're doing these voices and stuff. Because Shrek was successful. And made a buttload of money because of the celebrity voices. Also it was just a good movie. And a lot of people liked it. But that, you know that's 
it's a fact uh, that it did well because a lot of the celebrity voices. And so every animated movie now has to have some random celebrity in it because they can't seem to make a good movie without a celebrity in it. It's like, just make the darn movie, you know? I mean, that trend isn't even really that big as it used to be. Heck, no one even really sees animated movies as much as they used to anymore. It's like, come on. It's really dumb. It's a really strange movie because it's not funny. It's... I don't know. I, I The music numbers are bad in all the Regrets movies, but they're really bad in this one. Uh, they're just awkward like it the reason why it's really bad here because it's the characters singing and now you get, you get bruce willis and this weird leopard thing have a song i think it's a leopard it's like a, some purple leopard or whatever and they sing a song um there are some other songs that get sung and <laughs> i don't know it, it it's kind of cool how it continues off of the second movie like there's actual references like how Chaz and uh his wife are having their honeymoon on this cruise, which is kind of like, you yeah. I mean, that did happen in the second movie. They did get married at the end of that one. So I guess that makes sense. But the rest of this is just like, this is just really at the end of the Rugrats time. It's just like, you're running it into the ground. You're just doing whatever because you just don't have any more ideas. And this is like, why are we doing this? Why are we still making Rugrats stuff? Oh, money. Well, it's not successful this time because this movie flopped. And it's strange because this movie also has the highest rating because all the other ones are rated G. This one's rated PG. has the highest runtime at 80 minutes when the first one's 79 minutes and the second one is 78 minutes. This movie just does not even feel like it needs to be a movie. It just feels like this would have been a, like a, a, a cool nifty crossover episode you would have seen on Nickelodeon. Like if I had saw this and I was like eight as like a crossover episode. I probably would have thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. Like a two-parter episode. Wow. But like as a movie, it just, why? Why are you doing this? There's, it doesn't accomplish anything. The other stories feel like they actually change the Rugrats world and they add things to it. All this does is it just puts the, it just puts the Wild Thornberries here who do not belong in this universe. And they're, and they're here and that's it. I mean, there's nothing that, the rest of the series takes from this movie. The second movie, you introduce Kimmy and Chucky's new mom. And then this first movie, you introduce um, Dill. You know, those characters continue on for the rest of the show. And they actually have character development. And they actually advance the characters. This movie doesn't even advance the characters. Like, Tommy's changed as a character from the first movie. You know, so, and then Chucky has a character arc in the second movie. What does this do? It's just like, what did you do? Like, what is the point of this movie? There is no point to this movie. And there's a reason why it's not remembered fondly. Um, I just don't like it. I, I don't know. I'm just done with this. Um, I gotta say, though, this, this deep trilogy set is pretty cool. Because um, it's like... This is the size it would be for one, uh, if you were buy each movie separately, which each movie separately in its own case would look, well, I, can, I would say they would look better, because they would, um, in each separate DVD on your shelf, because it's like, well, you own them all individually, and it's nicer to own, I, it is nicer to own every movie individually, but it's more expensive, so this is like five bucks, about this five bucks at Walmart. But you got the Rugrats movie, Rugrats of Paris, Rugrats Go Wild, and you got all three here, and that's just nice. And then you got, um, on the back for the Rugrats movie, you get a bonus cat dog short, which that movie, uh, that short was released with this movie, uh, theatrically, so, uh, cat, it's called Winslow's Documentary, which, that's all there is for the first one, which is a little unfortunate. Rugrats in Paris, Sound Effects Showcase, Chucky... Chan dream sequence is just like that sequence is terrible anyway so I don't know why that's here bomb and music video for who let the dogs out because yeah uh, I think it actually appeared first in this movie and I know I complained about that in the last video like every movie used that but it's like it's weird that who let the dogs out was in this movie 
And there's also a Rugrats and Pay Earth documentary, and then third one, Rugrats Go Wild has deleted scenes, behind the scenes feature it, and an alternative ending, which I probably should have watched that before this review, but I doubt it really would have made this film better. Like, there's, the, the problems would have still been here. Um, the ending isn't really the problem. The ending isn't really even bad, anyways. The ending's fine. <laughs> I don't know. This movie is just... The set's nice. Uh, I just recommend if you're going to watch these movies, pick it up in the set because it looks really nice. But that being said, I just... I'm done. I'm done with the Rugrats, okay? <laughs> I love the Rugrats, but just like, it's... Wow. I, I remember it being bad, but it, it, it was about the same I remember, honestly, but I was hoping it would have been a little bit better, but nope. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. So let's do a ranking of the Rugrats trilogy. Here we go. Number one. Rugrats in Paris. This movie has an emotional edge to it. And it really makes it a cinematic masterpiece of filmmaking. Uh, you really should watch this one over uh, over Citizen Kane or 2001 or Space Odyssey or The Shining. None of those movies are good. And you should watch um, E.T. after you watch Rugrats in Paris because there's some deep parallels to each film. Uh, I sound like George Lucas, but I'm not George Lucas. Next film. You should watch Rugrats in Paris. Because that's another movie with a cinematic edge to it. I don't know what I was just doing, but that happened. <clears throat> you know, it's funny how I went this whole review not even talking about my thoughts on the Wild Thornberries series and, and the actual movie. They're okay. Like, that's it. That's all I really have to say. They're okay. No huge defense of why they're the most underrated Nicktoon or whatever. Because they're kind of underrated. But like, I mean, they're not that great. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, 